you have uh, uh, talked a good deal about uh, uh, aversive controls and positive controls yes. in terms of this punitive thing. Explain what you mean and how it applies to the classroom. Well, it wasn't so very long ago that education was almost entirely aversive. That is to say, there was a birch right up on the wall and it got used or students were sent to the principal to be beaten in English public schools still today. Uh, there's a great deal of caning going on, so that the student, in essence, is studying to avoid the consequences of not studying. And that isn't good, and they can avoid the consequences another way. They can just play truant and, or drop out of school as soon as they legally can drop out. Uh, vandalism, attacks on teachers, these are all byproducts of the aversive techniques. I'm trying to, to show that students can be given positive reasons for, for coming to school, sitting down, getting to work, learning something. And I think there's no question that that is the case. And um, that it is a, a, a great change because there's a great change in the byproducts. You don't have this uh, added, negative attitude or critical attitude. Students become interested in things and they're much more likely to go on in a positive way toward other subjects. What are some of the positive kinds of controls or rewards that you can, that you can give youngsters to make them, mm -hmm. uh, rather than, you know, yeah. punishing them with, with a birch stick? Well, the human organism is built so that um, su simple success uh, is reinforcing. You give a baby a rattle and the baby makes a noise with the rattle and it's terribly exciting to the baby and it shakes the rattle. Now, if you give uh, a student a program let's say in arithmetic, in which he discovers step by step that he, he can do these things. He didn't think he could, didn't know he could, but now he does. It's mere success. It's often enough. However, if you've got uh, students who have been uh, pretty much uh, messed up by faulty education, you may need to step in. I've, I've seen classrooms which were just out of control. The teachers were on the point of resigning or being fired. The students were racing around doing nothing and so on. There you have to be much more positive. You have to bring in some, some quite clear, sharp reinforcers. And I, I wouldn't myself um, be a, to object to using money occasionally or some pretty conspicuous rewards. And when they are made contingent on the behavior in the right way, that kind of classroom will straighten out. In a week or two, it becomes an orderly, quiet, productive class. Then you can begin to taper off and, and allow success to take over as the major accomplishment. The plus the, the teacher's uh, commendation and the fact that the, one, the, the student's uh, peers also recognize him now as a person who, who can do things. Some teachers are also highly critical, I guess educators in general sometimes are highly critical of the idea of rewards other than, you know, intrinsic uh, feelings mm -hmm. of, of yeah. learning. Yeah. Why, what is the reason for this criticism? Well, I don't quite know why because um, until very recently, and still at the present time, they will accept uh, punitive contingencies. There's nothing natural about studying arithmetic to avoid a whipping, but there's nothing natural to study arithmetic to get a, an ice cream cone at lunchtime. That's quite true. But there's also nothing very rewarding in studying arithmetic at that age. You have to find something to get the student to do these things. Later on, when he gets a job or has to make his checkbook balance, uh, he gets the natural rewards of knowing how to do arithmetic.